So just a little bit more information about Sister Sukaina. Um, Sukaina is a conscious parenting coach. Um, she lives in UAE for them. She's been living there for the past 21 years. Um, those of you who've been to Dubai or stay there would probably uh, would have met her there. Um, the majority of her child was, was settled in the city called Dar es Salaam, that's in Tanzania as well. Um, so that's where she was based um, in her childhood as well. Um, she is the mother of two daughters and one son. Um, Arifa, Rukay, and Muhammad, and she can speak a variety of languages, um, such as English, Swahili, Kachi, Gujarati, Urdu, and Hindi. So if anybody does want to um, communicate with her, we will pass her details as well. Sukaina's professional career um, involves being a teacher. Um, um, she's also a parenting coach, a conscious parenting coach, and she's actively involved in the community service as well. And hence, she would like to do this session uh, for Ikra Library. So inshallah, all mothers, all uh, parents um, can benefit from this session as well. Um, Sukaina, uh, alhamdulillah, has succeeded in anything she puts her mind to it. And this is where she wants to let us know that if we focus on something, we can inshallah achieve it as well. Um, and she will explain more about today's topic as well when she covers that as well. Um, she started a conscious parenting journey in 2017, uh, where she picked up the book called Awakened Family by Dr. Shefali. Um, I think a lot of you might have seen the book as well. We have shared the book in um, the PDF version in the Ikra Library WhatsApp group as well. An amazing book, and that inspired her to do this conscious parenting journey. Um, Dr. Shefali has inspired her to be a parenting coach and she brought her awareness to the lack of conscious parents and wanted to do her best to serve the community and people in need. And we're thankful for that as well. And this is where she comes in to help Ikra Library. Sukaina has done multiple teacher training courses. Um, she has done courses like Love and Boundaries, Raising Beautiful Girls, Surrendered Wife, the Awakened Family, The Awakened Heart, and Conscious Parenting Coach, um, where this is relevant. Um, through her career in conscious parenting, um, she's inspired and empowered many women out there, many men out there, parents, to overcome any obstacle in the parenting process. As we all know, of whoever's parents here, um, it is a challenging journey, but it's doable. We just need to hang in there. Um, and she's been helping a lot of caregivers about their patterns, triggers, and showing them how to connect with their children mindfully. Uh, for those of you who've been joining Ikra Library sessions with um, Sister Sukena, she's done several topics which have been very relevant, such as connection over correction. Um, she's covered things like he healing inner child wounds, emotional coaching, anger transformed, um, and Alhamdulillah, I've had many messages from parents saying these sessions have been wonderful, have helped them. For those of you who've missed those sessions, they are on Ikra Library YouTube channel. So feel free to um, listen to them whenever you get a chance and inshallah, they will benefit all of us. Um, we thank Sister Sukaina for all her time in helping and parenting parents such as myself as well. Uh, may Allah bless her and her family abundantly. And now I would like to pass on to the session to Sister Sukaina. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, welcome sisters uh, to today's uh, talk. So before I start my talk, I would like to thank Musarat for such a beautiful long introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much for introducing me. So we can all relate to today's topic because it's happiness and success, right? So I'll just screen share because I'm such a visual learner and I love to always share my PowerPoints. So yeah, let's start. Um, Musarat, can you see the PowerPoint? You can see my screen? Yes, yes, I can see. All right, fine. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wa Yasirli Amri, Wahlul Ukdatam Mil Lisani Yafkahu Kauli. So, a very important point in our parenting journey usually is happiness and success. You know, if one thing I ask the parents is, What do you want for your child? Immediately they'll tell me, Happiness and success. Why is this prevalent need? Well, because we have bought into the mythology that children deserve to be happy and successful. All right, so whose job it is to take them there? Maybe we can have some interaction that will be interesting, right? Because I keep talking and then it becomes uh, just me talking, right? 
So whose job is it to take them there? Definitely it is the parents, isn't it? So I will ask you a few questions, then you can answer it in the chat box and I will check it. So definitely it's the parent's job to raise happy and a successful child. And that's the desire of the parent, isn't it? Nobody wants a sad or unsuccessful child. After all, what crazy parents want an unhappy and an unsuccessful child? In fact, wanting our children to be happy and successful sounds normal. And it actually sounds downright selfless, sincere, and even angelic. All right. So I will debunk this inconvenient truth, but it's only when we look at our belief systems and unlearn what we have learned in the past, then only we can awaken. All right. So let's see how happiness and success creates disconnection, all right? So when we say it is our greatest desire to be wanting our children to be happy and successful, let me tell you that it's this desire that messes things up for our children and ourselves. It's actually the cause of great disconnection, okay? You see these terms happiness, success are so misunderstood that in our case, we actually end up causing more harm than good. It's actually this chase that actually forms the root of much of our anxiety, stress. We see in the modern day parenting today, we certainly, we see it as a weight on our children's shoulders. They are carrying this heavy burden that we put on them because we expect them to be successful and happy in life. So truly, if we want to see our children as sovereign beings, we need to deconstruct our desire for them. We can begin our sentence by saying, I want, right? I want happiness and success for my child. So when you say I want, what is the problem here? The problem, the two fundamental problems that exist is I, and the second word, which is want. So who is I? It is you. So right there, you know that you are beginning your sentence either with need or desire, yeah? So you know whenever you start a sentence with saying, I want, it's either you desire something or you need something, all right? So we have deconstructed I. When we say, I want happiness, I want success for my child, it is you who are wanting that, right? So you are in need or in desire. When you come to the word want, can anybody really want anything for anyone else? That is the question. Wanting things for others sets up us for resistance. It says, I do not want what is actually happening, but I do not want things to happen in this way and I want them to happen in a certain way. So I want to fix it, manage it and do it my way, right? So I'm not accepting what is happening currently in my child's life. Let's say they are failing, all right? I want to fix it because it's a desire. I want my child to be successful. So wanting things for others sets up sets us up for resistance. It says, I do not want what is actually happening, but I do want something else to happen. You see how this creates a disconnection. When we resist the as is of the situation and want the as is to be something other than it is right there, we have created suffering for ourselves. Resistance creates suffering for ourselves and for our children, right? Because we are trying to rescue, fix, manage. How can I bring happiness to my child? I want my child to be successful. So if they are failing, we'll be panicking. First step to change is the acceptance of the as is. Whenever you accept what is happening currently in your child's life or your spouse's life or your own life for that matter, you are no more in resistance. 
accepting the as is does not mean you are a pushover. No, that's not true, right? Accepting the as is is to look at the situation and accept, okay, I am failing now or my child is failing currently. So first you need to accept because as long as you are in resistance, you are not in acceptance. These two are opposites, all right? So first you need to accept my child is not happy. My child is failing. As long as you are accepting, that is exactly the opposite of resistance. So let's debunk the myth of happiness. What does happiness mean? What does happiness truly mean? Because happiness for one person is different from another. Maybe what I think is happiness is totally different from me, what you think is happiness, right? So I want you into the chat box to write for me, what does happiness mean for you? Please, I would like to see that. Some engagement from your part and that will enlighten me as well, right? What does happiness look like for you? What is happening? Okay, what else? Feel connected. All right. Very nice. Maybe some more words. What does happiness mean? Inner peace. All right. Thank you, ladies. I think we are getting in the right direction. In control to take sensible decisions. In control is something which we don't want to actually encourage because you are never in control all right who is in control allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all right you are never in control of your life god is he's in charge that's why we are talking about when we say it's, it's just uh, something i wanted to highlight that's all mental peace all right a sense of purpose and understanding of one's situation in a meaningful way wow thank you i think that is zahida bilal's mom i'm not sure but yes, thank you, ladies. So happiness can look very different from my notion to your notion. Somebody says peace. Somebody says contentment. Somebody says success. Some people see happiness as success. How I can be successful that brings happiness. Ha happiness, Because people seek validation from happiness, right? From success, they feel happy. And this is how they seek validation, which is okay. All right, but we need to understand what happens to us in our relationships with our children or with our spouse, right? We want a non-pain existence for our children. And this is absolutely normal because pain is so painful. Naturally, we want to rescue our children from pain, but we have to understand that is, is painless existence available? non-pain life, is it available to us? Is it possible? We have all been through life, right? So let us ponder over this thing, right? Because pain is so painful. So it's natural for us to want our children not to feel pain, right? We want um, all want a non-painful existence for our children. Yeah, but is that possible? Is that possible? Can I have answers in the chat box, please? Is it possible to have a non-painful life? You have all adults, you all have kids. No. Yeah, so many no's. I don't think we have met before. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, okay. Right, thank you. Thank you for clarification. All right, so yeah, there are so many no's. So you agree with me, right? There is no non-painful existence. We know life is not free from pain. In fact, the very nature of life is to be intermittent with pain and non-pain. Pain is inevitable in life, right? Pain is an integral part of life. Life is suffering, ups and downs, joy and suffering. There is no light without darkness. We can't know the experience of joy without the experience of sadness. In order for our children to live in this world, shouldn't they experience all kinds of existence? The painful ones and the non-painful ones, the comfortable ones and the non-comfortable ones. 
So the idea of life being non-pain is an illusion. It's a dangerous one, yeah? One that causes us to judge ourselves, but also judge life. So when our life shows up as pain, we judge it. We are constantly in a state of resistance, judgment toward life. Example, as we can see in social media, people posting happy pictures. Maybe they went to a picnic, they went to um, some social event. They are posting these pictures. We see, I see day in, day out, people coming to me and telling me, I feel depressed because when I see the social media, I see people sharing their happy moments. But that's not true because we don't post our sad moments. We don't post our anxious moments. We don't post our angry moments of, of life. We just want to show happiness, right? So let's move away today from this utopic idea altogether. Stop wishing for anything at all. Wish for things that aren't here because that will make us sad, right? So let's move this idea of happiness into accepting the life as is. Let's wish for them, for our children, to experience life in the present moment as it appears. Let's teach children life is a journey of flux and flow, pain and non-pain. Let's teach them pain is natural, inevitable. And then when they truly experience their life, they will handle anything that life throws at them. So, all of life is worthy, not happy, happy moments. Your life is full of experience, right? It's full of experience, happiness and sadness, disappointment, anger, anxiousness, right? All this is part of life. So tell your children, happiness is an illusion. Yeah, that's the reality. Life is to be engaged with without expectations, without pressure. It flows into your awareness and our capacity to meet where it is. It's a sign of strength, resilience, and purpose. So we release this insane pressure for looking for happiness, replacing it with joy and experience in life in the present moment fully. So let's tackle the notion of success. So I debunked the first myth for everyone that happiness is not something that you search for. You don't look for it outside. You look for it by, by the way, it's inside. So when I asked before, what does happiness mean for everyone? Somebody said mental peace. Someone says contentment. Someone says to me inner peace, right? So you have the idea that happiness lies within. It's not external. You don't look for it outside. You look within, right? You understanding you are enough. Whoever you are, whatever you are today, you are enough and you don't need to seek happiness outside. And it's okay to be unhappy. It's okay to be sad because today we are learning to learn to live life in the as is, to accept the present moment. Whatever shows up, there has to be acceptance, not resistance. When we are in resistance, that means we are not in the acceptance of the as is, all right? So let's tackle the notion of success. We all crave it, yeah? So now let me ask you guys, what does success look like for you guys, right? Let's make this interesting. What does success look like? I'm sure I'll get religious stuff as well, inshallah. Some people saying, you know, I want my child to go to Hausa. <laughs> or somebody saying, uh, sometimes, you know, people tell me I want my child just to be religious or because definitely we want good things. All right. Amazing akhlaq. Okay. Thank you. That's nice. All right. Achievement in life. Okay, can you specify more what does achievement in life mean? Because we need to deconstruct the myth of success. So I need to know what it actually, what you actually mean by achievement, right? Because achievement can mean something else for someone else, right? Someone will think achievement as grades. The other person thinks as achievement as uh, having a good job or making money. 
Success is gaining Allah's pleasure, all right? Okay. Being a good human being, okay? I can resonate with that. Allah's pleasure, yes, truly understood. Okay, the best. To be doing in your best in all that you do, all of the pleasure of Allah, subhanAllah. All right, yes, but we are not always listening, are we? We can be in resistance. We are fighting with our circumstances. We are going through pain. Pain is a portal of transformation. Pain is important in life because it creates uh, more connection with God. It makes us think out of the box. Now I'm in pain, ouch. I need to heal myself. I need to connect to God. I need to speak to God because I need relief. I'm in pain. How can I feel better, right? Recognizing and responding to one's unique calling in contributing to others. Subhanallah, that was beautiful. Truly surrender to what Allah has in plan for you. That was beautiful. Mashallah, we, I think we are getting to places. Ladies, you are amazing. Everyone, thank you. So we disguise, as parents, we are very clever. Yeah, we disguise success with all these beautiful words like purpose, authenticity, but this is what we want for our children. Then why do we chase it? Our children are already purposeful. Whatever we think they are, whatever we think they should chase, they already have it. They are sovereign beings. Remember from my past talks, children are sovereign beings. We are seeing them as sovereign beings. So let's not lie to ourselves. We mean only one thing when we talk about success. It means we want them to win. We want them to be first. We want them to be rich. So success means achievement, wealth. Let's be honest with ourselves. Many times we get um, you know, mixed up with this idea. So today we are going to deconstruct it. So um, this is an extract from the awakened family. Uh, and Dr. Shafali gives the example of her client, Cassandra. And she says that uh, Cassandra comes to her and says, you know, that uh, I have scheduled my life uh, to, to encircle around my children to give them enrichment time, to give them enrichment time. In her defense, Cassandra said she would sacrifice her self-care, her career in the name of giving success to her child. Well, she did have something to show for it. Her children excelled in academics, sports, but two out of her three children were suffering, were suffering inside. One with this debilitating anxiety disorder, the other one began cutting and suffering intense panic attacks. All right, let's move forward. So what happened? Most of our parents want their children to their room, children's room to glisten with trophies and medals, which truly believe that they can achieve success. The easier life will be and the less they will suffer. What we are not aware is success can't be defined in narrow metrics. Culture makes us do it when success is defined by external criteria, typically achievement, wealth, beauty, belonging. Then our children are taught to be pawns at this. They are chasing it with all their might, thinking their very worth depends on this. We also suffered this as kids, I'm sure. We don't achieve what we, when we don't achieve what we think we should, what happens? Then we feel unsuccessful, unworthy, anxious, depressed. We believe we do not have a sense of self. So like a yo-yo, our children's and our state of inner worth and self-esteem is hinged on this ephemeral external concepts. Up when things are well, and down when things don't go so well. And you know, it's not just our kids, it's every adult as well. So when we pawn ourselves with external criteria and swing with their merciless tides forever, unanchored in a rooted sense of worth, what happens is we become ungrounded. We begin to have anxiety attacks we begin to lose who it is we are. So putting our children in front of a race because we view life as a race really 
needs a paradigm shift. We need to change how we see happiness and success. So do we really need our children to achieve to the greatest highs to be worthy and happy? Do we want to teach them that without external success, they are nothing? We can't have our children base their sense of who it is they are on anything external. So this paradigm shift, moving away from ideas of success and happiness to the true experience of the life in the present moment, truly engaging in the moment as it appears, this shift in paradigm is key to moving away from traditional model of parenting to conscious parenting. It takes courage to admit this. This is what culture had fed us. I know you don't want your kid to be left behind and I understand your fear. Conscious parents are daring because we do not do what culture tells us to do. Modern parenting is plagued with this hyperactivity and anxiety all centered around this notion of success, fitting in because of this artificial induced pressure most of us parents are our, our, and our children constantly feel overburdened. So I would like you to, in the chat box, just give me an example how you pressurized your children to achieve. Because when we didn't know things, we were doing this unconsciously. Now we know better, inshallah, we will do better. So there is no judgment here, ladies, all right? And gentlemen, hopefully, I don't know, right? There is no judgment here. How did you think in the previous times, have you put pressure on your child to achieve success or rescued them from being sad, right? Maybe you can tell when, I'll give you an example. So one of my child has this thing, when they are sad, they want to have ice cream. <laughs> so when, I, when that child of mine says, I want ice cream, I know, okay, you are sad today. Why are you escaping? Why do you run away from your true self? You are sad. You are supposed to address your sadness. Sit with your sadness. It is here to tell you something, right? So we don't tune in. We start seeking outside. We start numbing our pain through addictive behaviors, right? What are the addictive behaviors? Binge watching Netflix eating ice cream, having chocolate, watching movies, um, exercising. It can be an addiction as well, right? It's a good addiction, by the way, right? Exercise, good addiction. Meditation, good addiction. Reading Quran, good addiction. Praying namaz, good addiction. You are finding a way to seek within. If you are meditating, you are sitting with your anger. You are sitting with your sadness. All right, so thank you ladies for answering. I said, how did you pressure your children when they were not succeeding? All right, forcing them to do something they did not want to do. All right, there we have it. Thank you for so much transparency. Offering them reward, all right. So bribing the children or giving them punishments to make them study to get good results. All right, thank you. Comparing them with other children. Oh my God, yes, that's Another one, comparison, right? Comparing the elder one to the little one or the little one to the elder one. So we create these dynamics ourselves in the house, right? So we have these dynamics, the golden child, the one who listens to everything and brings you straight A's. There's no argument. This child is obedient. But then we have the rebellious one who is going to push you to see your true self and see that where you are coming from. So when we find resistance, in our families with our children, we start getting panicky and we start getting scared. Instead of seeking within and looking within, we start controlling, punishing, rewarding. Uh, we start different kind of tactics in order for the children to be able to perform because we see success as something to achieve on the outside. We see success as good results. We don't see child the child as a sovereign being. So thank you so much for uh, sharing this, pushing, punishing, rewarding, praising, um, maybe promising things. Sometimes parents promise, okay, I will take you to uh, Disneyland. I will take you whatever you want. 
you want a mobile phone, you want a laptop, right? So we are bribing, but where are we coming from? What are we um, teaching our children? What are we trying to tell them? This is more important. Your performance is more important than you. No, that's not true. Children are sovereign beings. We need to see them as sovereign beings, right? So this is how we are perpetuating negative behavior, right? We are going to perpetuate this cycle, which is a toxic cycle by creating more burden, by giving gifts or punishing. We are creating more tension, more burden, or we are teaching them to seek from the outside. We are telling them your worth is on these results. It depends on these results. If you are not an A-star student, you are not good enough, right? So you don't have to do this anymore. You can opt out. What if I were to tell you that you can let go of all your fear-based paradigms and parent yourself and your children without any of that pressure? In order to forge a new path, we need to completely let go of what the matrix has told us. Let go of all the stuff, all your ideations around success, worth and belonging and allow for a new experience of yourself and your children and life itself. Conscious parenting is really about allowing your children to understand fundamentally who it is they are inherently is worthy of success and it is happiness right there. We want our children to accept who they are and to learn to be happy with who it is they are in this journey to accept themselves fully because it is the self-acceptance that actually leads to a highest sense of inner peace, inner validation, and inner worth. Can I want everyone to understand um, what I am trying to explain here is, do you understand the fact that inner peace comes from seeking and understanding yourself? when you understand who you truly are. You validate yourself, you understand your worth, you understand that you are enough, you are amazing, you are beautiful, you are a sovereign being. If you understand that for yourself, then only you can teach that to your child. So we have done these mistakes previously, but not anymore. We know differently now, and we understand that I'm enough. I'm a sovereign being. I have a soul. God loves me the way I am. And I have to love me the way I am. I don't need to seek this validation. And I don't have to rescue my children and myself from sadness, anger, and other aspects of life. How about input? What do you guys think when I have talked about this right now to explain to you what is true happiness? It's a journey to accept yourself fully, self-acceptance, right? And inner validation and seeking worth. I want some input from the public, from everyone. What do you think on this notion? Have you understood accepting yourself, seeking validation for yourself, accepting for yourself who you are? That is extremely important. What have you taken home from this point that I've just shared? If uh, I can have some answers in the chat box, please. I'll give you guys one minute, right? Thank you. Okay, to know yourself is to know God. Very good, yeah? Man arafa nafsa, man arafa. Rabba. Exactly. So you have to understand if we are in resistance, we have not accepted ourselves. We have not accepted God's plans, right? We cannot be in resistance because that is tawakkal to Allah. Trust in God. When we are in resistance, we should know, oh, okay, I'm not okay. Why am I resisting? What am I attaching here? What is it? What is my agenda? So when you are in resistance, I will advise you today, stop, drop, and breathe. Stop yourself, drop your agenda, and take a deep breath in and let go. Whether you are fearful, fear of being, I'm not enough, fear of failure, 
fear of being judged, right? Fear of uh, not being happy, fear of whatever fear that you have, inferiority complex. It can be fear of not being acceptable, right? Stop, drop, and breathe. Stop yourself, drop your agenda, breathe, trust God, seek within. How can you do that? You are going to meditate, you are going to journal, and you are going to understand that living the life in the as is, is extremely important, all right? Every step, somebody shared, every step you take should be for Allah. Yes, that means muhasiba, muraqiba. Check with yourself. When you are in resistance, you are not your true self, all right? When you are in resistance, there is an agenda. So stop, drop, and breathe. That's what we need to do. Changing, somebody shared, changing to this mindset will help us and our children face life challenges with inner peace and contentment. Yes, ahsantum. Thank you. Yes, true happiness is to follow your intentions uh, and heart without any fear. Yes, you should not be fearful to follow your heart. Correct. Or fear of judgment from people, right? So today's task, I'm going to give everybody a task. Inshallah, you can do this. What if your child's report card had C's? How are you going to, um, how are you going to tackle this situation? All right, so today we learned what is true happiness and true success. Allow them to experience failure. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Allow them to experience failure. You did not hear me. I'm following again, because if you think I'm delusional, <laughs> I'm going to repeat. Allow them to experience failure. Allow them to experience unhappiness and pain without projection. The children will be confused at first because they are used to mommy and daddy refusing, jumping and fixing everything. So they would look at you accurately. They might think, hmm, they aren't doing anything. Isn't that weird? That's what the children will feel. So this is an opportunity for you to teach them consciousness. Tell them you are learning to accept life as it shows up. You are learning to honor, to celebrate pain. You will teach them to feel their feelings as they arise. Trust me, your children will soon learn and understand on their own the transformative power of pain like you they too will begin to grow to see it as an immensely valuable and essential portal for transformation. So I usually use this phrase in my talks and I say pain is a portal of transformation. Do you guys agree with me? Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you believe pain is a portal of transformation. Yeah? Okay, thank you Musarat for that thumbs up. All right. Okay. Who thinks that pain is a trans, uh, pain is a portal of transformation? Who agrees with me? I'm sure all of you have been through so many painful experiences, right? Um, we go through death, right? We go through grieving. So we see in our family, we see death, but people grieve and then they become different, right? Because we go through stages in life, right? What happens first? We are in resistance with the as is, all right? So I'll give you an example of any big thing that happens in your life. So I was talking about grieving, right? So you go through something called DABDA. D stands for denial. A stands for anger. B stands for bargaining. Um, DABDA, D is for depression and A is acceptance, all right? So I said, whenever you go through a grieving process, you go through these five stages, all right? So, and anything major happens in your life, first of all, the cognitive dissonance in the brain, in your mind is going to do this. You are going to deny something big happened. Let's say there was a big accident, you lost someone. So first you deny, then you are angry. Why did this happen? Then you'll bargain. I wish I would have come out half an hour late, bargaining. Then comes after bargaining, dab, da, depression. We go into this depressed state of mind because you are wishing things would be different. 
then comes acceptance. When you see now, oh, okay, I cannot change the situation. I will accept the as is. All right. So this is what a person goes through when they go through some sort of grieving process. But even if there were big major changes in life, right, you would go through these stages, right? That's why accepting the as is, it's a little hard because we come with an agenda. We come with expectations. We have a plan for our children, right? This, 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 this. What is the plan? We are going to go nursery, primary, high school, college, university, uh, bachelor's, master's, PhD. But when things don't turn out the way we expected, we are in resistance, all right? So we go through these uh, stages, but these are important things, right? Coming away from resistance and accepting the as is, it's so important, right? And so I, that's why I discuss these stages. So this is a poem by Rumi, which is very important because I've been saying in my previous talks, how to feel your feelings how important it is to accept yourself for who you are, whether you are angry, sad, whatever it is happening. So I'll share this poem with you guys and see how profound this is. The guest house is the name of the poem. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture. Still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughingly and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has being sent as a guide from beyond. All right, so this is profound. This is profound insight, right? So Rumi is telling you to accept, accept the sadness, accept the joy, accept the anger, accept the imtihan, accept the pain, accept whatever life throws at you, right? If it is you are grieving, accepting is healing. Accepting is a cure. When you are in resistance, you have an agenda. So I taught you something today and I told you, whenever you are in resistance, how are you going to register it? Stop, drop, breathe. Stop yourself, drop your agenda and breathe. How are you going to drop your agenda? Take a journal, start writing down. What is your plan in your head? You wanted things a certain way, but they are not going your way. So stop resisting, accept the as is. How can you do life differently? You trust God. That doesn't mean you surrender totally to the as is. That doesn't mean you are um, dormant and let other people um, walk over you. No, you always have a, cho a choice. Either you change, you leave the situation, you change yourself, all right? And if you are in a marriage, I would tell you in a marriage, you can leave, you can change or accept the as is. If you're accepting the as is, then there is no resistance. You have accepted your spouse to be in a certain way and you understand the only person in the dynamics is that's going to change is me because that is awareness. That is understanding. You cannot fix others. You can only change yourself. You can be a better version of yourself. You will do muhasibah muraqiba change yourself accept the as is or leave the situation that means you can get a divorce if it's a marriage you can't leave your children for that matter but just in marriage i'm giving an example and change yourself change yourself applies to every situation whether it's in parenting with your spouse with your in-laws wherever you are changing yourself is what is going to work in every situation because when you see life from other person's point of view, you are going to feel compassion. You are going to give unconditional love because you are seeing life from their point of view. You are trying to understand how is my child feeling today? They have just failed a test. If I'm going to um, criticize them, blame them, shame them, 
what am I achieving? Isn't that going to create disconnect, right? So when you see it in a different way, you are definitely going to be more loving, more compassionate, more patient, and you will give unconditional love, inshallah. Thank you so much. Um, I have concluded my talk for today and hoping that uh, everybody does agree with me. If you do agree, please, can you shower me with those thumbs up in the chat box? All right, so any questions or any feedback, ladies, I'm here to hear your point of view, how everybody has suffered, like we know through COVID, right? When COVID happened, everybody had to take the pause. They had to stop and they had to breathe and they had to brainstorm out uh, different ways to do life. People were going to work physically, but they had to work from home. When they had to work from home, they had to deal with the children who were homeschooling. So you were multitasking when you were home. You were working from home. You were managing your house chores. You were looking after the children, guiding them as well from home. So isn't that a big paradigm shift, right? COVID brought a big paradigm shift for us, right? We had to um, adjust and readjust to life over and over again. There were challenges, but we kept on brainstorming them and definitely we changed our thinking. We, we could see, oh, I can work from home and I can multitask and I can cook the food, look after my kids and be at home. And wow, it, isn't it amazing? Now we have a reality check. Now, almost everything is normal in the UK. Everyone has to go to work. So they hate that commute. <laughs> they hate to be stuck in traffic. They have to come out early. So now that is inconvenient, isn't it? Because now you have to go to work physically. So there again, accepting of the as is. When we have our paradigm shift, we understand this is what life is and it will bring all sorts of emotions, all sorts of challenges. If we see life from other person's perspective, we are not going to project. Thank you so much, Sukaina. You're right. I think we got ex we accepted when we were at home um, during the COVID times. We felt like we were more in control with our children. We knew what they were doing. We were there to guide them, assist them. Um, and now they've gone back to colleges, school, and um, sometimes you get one answers uh, from them when you ask them how was their day, and you feel like you've lost that. Um, that control, but we can still establish that connection the way you said how we can do that. Um, so thank you so much. Um, so yeah, we are evolving in ourselves. We're developing ourselves. It's never constant, stable as well, um, static. We're always getting, inshallah, trying to do our best as well. So we do have some questions. Um, somebody's asked, this accepting means happiness. All right, so we debunked happiness, didn't mm. we? Yeah. All right. So I would want maybe um, if anybody can share uh, something from public's point of view, because yes, I'm talking, but I want these talks to be understood because these things are not just me saying and you listening. You are supposed to do this. Does accepting means happiness? No, not necessarily. God forbid. Not necessarily. Accepting could be God forbid. Um, I'm saying this because I have to give practical examples. So please, um, I don't mind if anybody judges me, but I'm doing this for educational purposes. The thing is, accepting the as is might look, my child is drinking. What am I to do now? All right, my child is 18, they have a drinking problem. What do I do? I'm in resistance. I'm trying to rescue the child. Stop drinking, stop smoking, stop doing this. But the mistakes have happened in the childhood. Right. Remember, we talked about brain development, zero to seven, we get our belief systems. So unfortunately, we did these mistakes of not validating the child. Did you see me? Did you hear me? Do I matter? Yeah, this unconditional love was not there for the child. We were punitive. We were judgmental. We projected. We blamed. We put fear uh, in the dynamics of the home. What happens is, so this question, does accepting means happiness? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. We have so many ladies staying in a marriage for, our, for their children. They've accepted the as is and they have compromised with their life because they do not want to um, bring up children without their father, let's say, for instance. So accepting the as is not necessarily means that it will, it will be your fantasy, your, your happiness, right? Because we all have a notion of happiness. What is true happiness? 
isn't true happiness um, following your true self, following what God has planned for you? If God has planned this imtihan for you, first accept. So I gave you an accept, uh, an example. My daughter is drinking, example. I gave you an example of drinking. First of all, I have to accept the as is. Okay, this problem has come to my life. Now, if I'm going to come from ego, I'm going to judge, blame, shame. There is cultural conditioning as well. Oh my God, my daughter doesn't fit in. Oh my God, my daughter is drinking. Oh my God, uh, I'm going to take her out of the house. Okay, I don't want to, I don't love you. So I reject her. I diminish her. I disrespect her. I devalue her. I never saw her as a sovereign being. The alcohol problem came because something has happened in the past. Either the child has gone through a lot of trauma. They have been shamed, they have been blamed. There was no connection, there was no validation. There was no safety at home. So the child did not grow up with a parent who gave them a safe environment to share their problems, share their feelings. Everybody was busy doing. The father is at work, the mother is at work. When they come home, everyone is exhausted. Children are exhausted from school. Parents are exhausted from work. So we did not give them safe environments. Everybody goes to their room with their phones or on the TV eating food. Nobody is engaging. We have high expectations and we have no engagement. When we have no engagement with our children, there is no relationship. When there is no relationship, there is no trust. When there is no trust, children will hide. When children will hide, they will do things. Why? Because here they have a gaping hole. What is the hole? I am not enough. They do not feel enough. Why? Because the parent did not validate properly. The conditions that a child needs at home, safety, security, love, acceptance, this was missing because everybody was just doing. Parents going to work, children going to school. No engagement, no relationship, no communication. Just eating, doing, and going. So now, definitely there were problems. The child could not trust because there was no relationship. So the child hid. But why would a child go into an addiction? Why? This happens because there is a big wound there. The wound is, I'm not enough. And who, who gave this wound? It's either the circumstances in school, they failed, or the parents maybe have projected, you know, that this is not good enough mark, you are failing, you're failing. So they did not feel validated, all right? So what happened next was, in order to fill this hole, numb this pain, because they cannot trust the parents anymore. So they want to numb the pain. Whenever a person is addicted, don't ask why the addiction, ask why the pain. Where is the pain coming from? From childhood. Something has triggered pain. Either I'm not enough or there's a traumatic experience. So there's anger and resentment in the child. The child feels I'm not enough. And the only way, the only way now they can live life is through addiction. And that so can the be addiction addiction with gaming as well, right? It can be addiction with gaming, uh, addiction yeah. with social so, media. Yeah. Exactly. So when we talk about addiction, maybe we should do a talk about addiction, right? I could do a talk about addiction next time because I'm getting a lot of queries, a lot of queries about, you know, my child is addicted to this, my child is addicted to that. Yes, but there is a psychological uh, need. There is something beneath that we are missing. We are looking at the behavior. Remember in my first talk, I said, we need to see beneath the behavior, beneath the behavior. So if we make amends and let's say we accept the as is, all right, this is the problem. Yeah. My child is drinking. How can I make this better? First of all, I have to accept, all right, I have made mistakes. I have to say my stories. How can I build my relationship? And then slowly tackle that problem with a coach or a psychologist where you can open up make amends, repair the relationship. Try to heal the pain of the child. Heal yourself first and the child as well. This is happening because of pain. Okay, somebody wrote interesting points. Would you please advise what incentives would you give to children, especially under 10 years of age? And uh, can you suggest books that you, all right. So today's talk, 
I've done from one of the myths that uh, the two myths that I picked up from the awakened family. Maybe Musarat, uh, if you can send this book again on the, yes, I'll do the that, yeah. uh, those people who have missed, they can read the book, The Awakened Family. It has six parenting myths. Today, we just busted two. Mm -hmm. But one of the uh, things that I actually wanted to do for Ikra Library was from, um, you know, expectations to engagement. This is where we are lacking. There are high expectations, but we are not uh, investing in the relationship, right? So that's why the children are in pain. So when the children are in pain, they're going to numb their pain. And now here, so much work has to be done. The parent has to pick up so many things. They have to heal themselves because they have projected. They have to say sorry. <laughs> Not only sorry, but they have to understand that they really miss the child's childhood. And there is no reverse gear in life, but accepting the is will create less resistance. You accept the situation, you try to make amends, you give unconditional love, you create the environment for healing where there is transparency, come to me. How can I help you? Keep an open mind. Whatever your child tell you, do not freak out. Do not make problems look big. Don't, we are culturally conditioned. So we blow things out of proportion because you know, we go, oh my God, it's over, I'm doomed. It's over, what will I answer the people? No, please, let's accept the as is. Don't think of the future. Leave the past, accept the disease, heal yourself, heal your child. And as for the incentives, uh, 10 points, uh, okay, uh, under 10, incentives under 10. Well, you can have incentives, you can have a chart and everything. It's all right, it's okay. But we have to understand that we do not create transactional love. Do this, you will get this right? You can give an incentive of, you know, your time together. So create incentives of engagement. Mm -hmm. Take your child to the park. You don't have to give them things like ice cream or movie or book or toy or game. No. Incentives could be more engagement with your child. How can you read bedtime stories? Take them to the park. Um, incentives could be mom will give you a big hug and kiss. If there is a strong relationship, that hug really matters. If the child's language is physical touch, that hug will really matter. Because the children are seeking validation from you. You need to understand that, that they are seeking validation from you. So that hug really matters to the child. Your validation matters. The problem of going out and getting drugged and being drunk, no child wants to do that. That's not their authentic self, that is ego. They are projecting their pain outside because they don't feel safe at home. That's why they are going into addiction. That's why they are getting influenced by others because they find acceptance there. They are finding love over there. They are seeing, oh, these people don't judge me, but my parents judges me. For whatever I do, there is criticism. Whatever I do, I'm not good enough. So what is the point? Then the child will say to you, okay, now I'm 18, I want to move out and I don't want your kid kit. I don't want your agenda. I don't want your lecture because you never came from an authentic place, right? So when we are being authentic, we will never be in lecture mode, sermon mode, fixing mode. Accept the as is, then fix. First accept, this has happened. Say sorry, make amends, get a coach, psychologist. Try to get into the uh, you know, problem area. But first, accepting, always. We've got a question here. Um, um, you know, with, um, it says it's important for spouses to be on board as well. How do you start this change in mindset parenting? I know obviously your sessions are open to men, fathers, um, ladies as well. So, um, and they are on YouTube. So I think the fathers would benefit from this session. But how do you have this conversation with your spouse? Um, obviously you've all been brought up differently as well. And um, you know, our mindset's been different as well. Yeah, I agree, I agree. But one conscious parent is more than enough. I always say that because in my house, the same dynamics plays. So I'm going to tell you, right? The primary caregiver usually is the mother. So if the mother can change, and I'm sure many of here, many are ladies over here. So if the mother can change, 80 to 90% of the dynamics of the house changes because she can tackle the husband as well. 
See, you educate your husband, you educate your spouse, teach them conscious parenting, debunk these myths of success and happiness. If we truly see our children for sovereign beings, for who they are, their soul, you see your child, they are so happy. They are so carefree. If your child is carefree, they are failing. It's okay. Everyone is born with a talent. Maybe they are not good at math or English or geography or science. It's okay. Maybe your child is going to be a graphic designer. They are not interested in this other thing like chemistry or mathematics. Fine. Just look at the talent of your child. Where is his strength? And this is what you need to uh, empower him with or her with. Okay. So see where your child's talent lies. Then only you can empower them. Instead of judging and being in resistance and forcing them to do something that is against their will, that is not going to be productive anyway. So create this mindset shift for yourself and for your spouse. Educate them, read books, create awareness so you can do parenting for Gen Z. We don't want to do parenting for model of 1947 right? We don't want an old model. The children are living in this era and we need to understand the Gen Z challenges are totally different. We were brought up in a very different manner and yes, we had to do and comply. Otherwise, we knew what was coming. We definitely knew what was coming. There was emotional abuse, physical abuse. There was devaluing, degrading the child, right? Demeaning the child, right? So we don't want to repeat those patterns, we are going to break the generational patterns by doing things differently. And this will help, inshallah. Plus trusting God, right? I know it sounds devastating if I tell you, somebody tells me my child is drinking and the person is devastated, is crying. They're feeling shame. But you have to understand one more point. I'll, because I've given this example, I'll give one more point is, remember, you cannot fix your child. What you can do is, create conditions, create conditions, accept you have done mistakes, say you're sorry, go to therapy, give unconditional love, accept, leave your affairs then to God, right? Because accepting of the as is actually means I trust my affairs to Allah. Trust Allah, he will help you. If you are ready to make amends, heal yourself, change your ways and do what is required and then trust God. Now, when I'm saying that, that means things can come back. The child will leave what they are doing and heal and come back to you. That can take one year, two years, three years, or it can go the other way. The child rebelled and left you. And now you are in pain, but you did your best. At least you changed yourself. You said your sorries, you made amends, you created therapy. And now you have to understand, you need to let go after age 21 because that child is no more a child, is an adult. You did your doing between zero to seven, seven to 14. You taught them the routines. You did your part. Unconditional lo love looks like I accept you for who you are. At the end of the day, everyone is responsible for their own actions, right? Thank you so much. Um, I think Sukain Sukain has done a few sessions for younger ones as well. So they are on YouTube as well. Um, as I mentioned before, connection over cor uh, correction, um, anger transformed, uh, emotional coaching, healing in the wounds as well. So they are on the Ikra Library YouTube channel as well. So feel free to listen to them. Um, there is a question um, on some tips on how to deal with challenges in autistic children in a positive manner. If you've okay, got any so tips on that. I had uh, done an uh, emotional coaching uh, video, even with autistic children. Uh, and, you know, we have uh, other things like ADD, ADHD. These are all, uh, you know, special children. And emotional coaching helps. The only thing is, as a parent, you have to be very patient. And I know it's not easy. If you have a child who has ADD, ADHD, or, you know, autism, it's very challenging because the child with uh, ADHD, they are hyperactive. With ADD, the children zone out, so they are not always listening. But consistency pays off patience. And uh, parents who have special needs children, they are, I think Allah is teaching 
them and us as well, even if we have children with our challenges, is that how is unconditional love looking like, right? Unconditional love looks like persistence. With emotional coaching, a lot of validation, a lot of acceptance, a lot of, you know, repetitive behavior. With emotional coaching, you have to understand with autistic children, with ADHD, ADD, you have to be self-regulated. So make sure you do your work because that child who is having autism or ADD, ADHD is going to trigger you left, right, and center. They have a problem. They have an issue. You have to be patient. So your self-regulation is very important. Make sure you are meditating, journaling, doing your early morning walks. You need to detoxify your hyperactivity, your anxiousness, your anger, your resentment has to be checked every single day. So before you sleep, when you wake up, do journaling. Do two rakats of shukar namaz. Do uh, shukar sajda for five minutes. Talk to God because that is therapy. Talk to Allah. Vent. Vent to Allah. Tell him how you feel. And in the position of sajda, you are going to be feeling much better because you will feel connected to God and you are in a position of sajda. Inshallah, Allah will listen to your duas, but you are detoxifying and self-regulating. Do earthing, do meditation, do yoga, go for walks. Self-care should be in check, especially for those parents who are having special needs kids. Then only they can do emotional coaching properly. Otherwise, you'll be triggered. Thank you so much. I think um, some of them are asking your contact details. Um, yeah, you, you can post ask... them on Itra Library's uh, WhatsApp group. Your I don't know. There, Anybody yeah? can ask me any question uh, in private because yeah. not every question can be answered due to time limit. Yeah, thank you so much. So wonderful session. I think, Sukaina, you covered it all, mashallah. You know what? Uh, as you said, we, things have opened up. We've had to adjust to new new ways of life. We're trying to go back to our old ways as well. So thank you so much to everyone for joining in um, today's session. Um, thank you to Sister Sukaina for taking that time out and always being there for Ikra Library. Uh, if there are any topics that um, you think it's relevant, please message me and um, I can contact relevant um, speakers as well and inshallah we can cover them as well uh, but thank you all for taking that time out inshallah once i've uploaded the video um the recording i'll put that on ikra library youtube channel as well um sukaina does have um on instagram you've got your instagram as well where she um is amazing how she posts little um, tips on there as well, like podcast as well, that will help as well. Uh, but I'll post that all on the Ikra Library WhatsApp um, group. If you do want to be added, please message me. I'll put the details on the, um, on the chat. And inshallah, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Sukaina. Um, you. Enjoy your day, everyone. Good afternoon.